Hi, uh, Jack, mate. Another week and we're back on the pod again. We are, yeah. This week we've got Cholton captain Jason Pearce joining us. Um, he's been at some big, big clubs during his career. He's been at Leeds, been at Portsmouth, Bournemouth. He started with, with Eddie Howe. And I think um, he, he's got a brilliant mindset from what I understand. And I just want to delve into that a little bit more. It's obviously been a tough year for all professional athletes um, around around the world, really, with, with the coronavirus. And the season was the stop-start uh, last season. And, and he's has have made a flying start to this season. There's been some turmoil off the pitch. And I just want to understand how, how Piercy essentially has galvanised that dressing room and, and, and got the team going at the start of this season. And obviously, being a Charlton fan, he's been at no bigger club than Charlton. Is that right? There's no bigger club than Charlton, mate. I don't, yeah, you uh, you know that. Being an Ipswich fan, we're a much bigger <laughs> club than you. All right, less of that. Let's get him on. <laughs> let's do it. Well, thanks for joining us, Jason. Really appreciate it. Um, Jack, being a diehard Charlton fan, would kill me if I didn't kick off by a start by saying how well Char- Charlton are doing at the moment, flying. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a great start. To be fair, obviously, I haven't I haven't really been involved because I've been injured, so it's been um, it's been difficult in one sense because I want to be part of it. But then, obviously, I'm I'm buzzing for the boys and and how well we sort of turned it around from the from the start, really. So, yeah, they want there the boys are on a high, and I'm just getting back from injury, so I'm hoping I can help out in the, in the coming weeks. So yeah, it's, it's six league games on the bounce, isn't it? You have won the the dressing room must be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, the boys, are, the boys are buzzing. To be fair, and it's like it's it's been weird because we've had so many new faces come in. So to to get six wins on the bounce is is unusual, really, with so many players. So um, the recruitment side's been really good, um, and bringing the right people in. All the lads seem really good and gelled gelled quickly. Um, and yeah, they're, they're they're doing well. So it's um, I'm look I'm looking forward to getting back in like full training now, really, and, and getting involved. And is that how it is? Being injured, but the team are doing so well. You're just itching to get back involved and just help them out. Yeah, when you're injured, it's quite um, quite lonely, to be honest. Um, you sort of you do your your, um, your rehab work with the physio, and then do a lot of, lot of it on your own. So it's it's quite hard, to be honest, like mentally, because you have to watch all the lads training, enjoying it, winning games, and then you're just trying in the background, just trying to get fit and want to be part of it. So. From that side, it's quite difficult, but but obviously when I'm I, I watched I've watched every game so far this season, whether that be the stadium or on um, on the computer, um, and, and the lads are doing well. So no, I'm I'm really pleased for, for the boys, and ultimately we all want to get promoted. That's that's great. I, I can't believe you're having to suffer with I follow like we are as well. Pity. <laughs> 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 obviously you've as you say, you're you're your club captain, so you you're almost the man that's in, in control of that dressing room. And with, when you've got loads of new lads coming in, how much is it kind of down to you to help bed them in? And obviously, there's been a big um, big turnover of players this summer. Yeah, nice. No, it's, um, it's it's obviously difficult, like um, being injured. But the type of person I am, and obviously being a captain, I try and I try and like make sure people feel welcome when they come in and show them where they need to go. And if they have any struggles, they can talk to me and stuff like that. I said to that um, the Ian Marston, I didn't really know. He, he didn't probably didn't know who I am because he's come from yeah. Chelsea, so he probably didn't even know. And I said to him, <laughs> "Probably don't even." I said, "Do you don't even know who I am, dear? You? you think I'm probably the kit man?" <laughs> and uh, he, he didn't. Well, he didn't give, give much away. But now I've sort of started training, and that he's he's he seems to be a bit better. But no, it's just it's just a it's weird. Like when when you haven't played, sometimes I haven't played against certain players, or they're too young to know me because I'm one of the older ones. Like it's just different. Diff- it's just different so you sort of have to then I feel like I have to then go and prove prove myself in training and show like what I'm about like you're on trial again <laughs> yeah yeah it is a bit like that but that's nah, all good brilliant crucial question for me because I support one of the teams in the league but who do you see as your big rivals this season uh, well probably the teams that are up there really like obviously Hull, Hull are up there um, it's just Ipswich um, De Portsmouth um yeah, like the, the, the big teams in the league and you'll get a few surprises that will probably get get in there. Um, I actually really rated Doncaster when, when they come to, yeah. to the Valley. I thought they were very good. Um, they look really good football inside, so I think they'll be up there. But there's some good teams and some good players in the league. So it's whoever's obviously consistent uh, throughout the season, which obviously I've been promoted twice from League One, so I know what it takes. So we're in a good position at the moment, but it's a long season. I think you're right. Consistency is the key. And... I'm an Ipswich fan, as I alluded to there, and uh, Doncaster played us off the park, but then lost the following week to Crew, 
Whereas you guys are just putting a run together. And if you can just build on that momentum going into Christmas, you'll be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's like, like I say, it's, it's about consistency. I also think a big thing this year will be the size of the squad as well. Because um, mm. there's, everyone's going to get injuries. Um, so it's how you use your squad now. And, and obviously Lee Bowyer um, likes to rotate his squads on Saturday, Tuesday games, which is which is great. And he's got, he has got strength in depth now. So yeah, like the, the boys are bedding in well. And if he can use that rotation and um, bring players in and they do well for him, then it's, it bodes well. So we'll yeah, hopefully it'll continue. You, you touched on Lee there and, and it's, it's well, well known that off the field at Charlton over the last few years, there's been, there's been some difficult times with ownership, but Lee Bowyer seems to be that consistent over the last two, three years now. How important is he to the success that, that Charlton have seen over, over that, that period of time? I know we've had a relegation last season, but we're, we're, we're bouncing back straight away and there seems to be a lot of character in that dressing room. Yeah, it's been, it's been weird. Obviously, I've been here five, six years now as well. So I've sort of seen, seen how it's gone. And obviously, since when, when, since Bo come in, like he's just rejuvenated the club and, Someone coming in with someone that's been at the club knows what the club expects, the fans expect, um, and he's got that real togetherness now at the club. Um, the players all work hard for him. That's, he expects 100% every game, and players working hard for each other. And and if he, if you don't get that, you don't play. Um, and people know that as soon as they come in the door. So that's that's a good sign. Um, and yeah, like I just think it's brought everyone together really. And and even even when we got relegated last year, I think. The fans could see them last final like nine games. We, we the boys give everything uh, to try and stay up, and unfortunately, with what went on with Lyle leaving, probably like was Chris Solly not being not playing, and it was it was difficult in the end. But the boys give everything, and I think that's what the fans appreciate. That. And you touched on it there, and, and I was gonna I was gonna ask this question, and it's it's a probably a difficult question as a teammate to answer. But how did the dressing room react when Lyle sort of come in and said, "Look, sorry lads, but I, I, there's a big move potentially on the table for me here." And I'm not going to be involved. How did you, you're all obviously mates? How, how did it how did it go down in the dressing room? It's just it's just a difficult situation for him and and and, and obviously us as players because we we want to stay up in the league. It's, it's our careers as well. Yeah, uh, of course. But so with with Lyle in your team, you, you're going to win more games with with him in your team. And uh, when he said he's not going to play, it's difficult to take as a teammate. But on the other hand, you, you realise why he's doing that because. He's got obviously a bit a big move on the cards, and anyone in in any walk of life in any job would would if you can quadruple plus your money, you you you've got to go for that, and you can't risk getting injured. So I totally I do understand where he's coming from, but it's just it was just hard, obviously, because we could have done with him. Yeah, absolutely. It was one point in the end, wasn't it? And that probably at one point would have been picked up if Lyle did play. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. How how was your role as captain? You said that you understood his situation. I bet not everyone in the dressing room understood his situation and just wanted him to to put his boots on for the team. Did you, did you have to step in as captain and just try and keep the peace a little bit? Well, no, I think it was once once the decision had been made. I think Lee Bowyer sort of made it clear he wanted to he wanted to know early early what what he had to play with, if you like. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think he made the decision to to find out whether the lads were either with with him or they weren't, and, and obviously the ones that weren't then then got pushed to the side, and and he, and he worked with the players that wanted to play and, and do the best for the club. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just for, from my point of view, obviously an experienced one. It was just it was what it, it is, what it is, um, and sort of said, yeah, this is what we have got, boys. Let's just do the best we can, and and we still felt we we had a good chance of staying up, and we. We give a good account of ourselves towards towards the end, but it just wasn't wasn't quite enough. Yeah, I think it was really tough on it. I think like you you look at as you say such fine margins in, in professional sport, and and that really was the epitome of that. It's I mean the amount of chances we had and just didn't quite take them, and and a few sort of deflected goals towards the end of the season. It was a must have been really tough for the team to take, but. Um, as I say, you seem to be bouncing back this season, and I think that's the strength of character in both probably yourself as a captain and and Lee Bowyer as a manager. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was uh, it was a tough night that one at Leeds. Um, you know, the, the changing room was so quiet uh, after the game. Everyone knew, and I think it was it was felt like an end end of an era. Sort of, we knew like some staff were going to be leaving, the player, a lot of players were going to be leaving, and yeah, it was it was a tough one. But like you say, in football, things change very quickly, and you got to regroup and, and go again. 
I think at the start of the season, when we hardly had any players, I was thinking, Jesus, we're going to struggle in now in League One as well. And, and unfortunately, obviously, um, the new owner come in and, and, and has put, obviously spent a bit of money or got some players in and, and we've assembled quite a good squad now. So, um, yeah, I'm hopeful we'll be, we'll be up there this season. No doubt. And we touched on it there that how tough it was at the end of last season. I think it was made tougher. And this was the same for everyone with no crowds, but in a relegation battle with no crowds, that must have been such an odd experience. Yeah, it was it was odd and, and it still is odd now. Like um yeah, seeing the mass of the big stadiums playing and, and no one there is it's weird. But I think in a sense, like it sort of helped us in a way, I I felt. And then we were just unlucky in the end, but it did help us in games. I think like, I'm quite vocal on the pitch, and it helps. Like for me personally, I could I could I was shouting about, and, and everyone could hear me on the pitch. Normally, with the crowd there, you, people can't hear you. So, in in certain certain ways, it did help. And then in in others, like some people obviously need the crowd to get them going, and um, in a game, and, and when you haven't got that, it's, it's, it's like a pre-season game, like with no one there. So it's, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's a weird situation. So do you think that's why we've seen a few odd scores, especially in the Premier League, you know, the 7-2 Aston Villa against Liverpool? Do you think that part of that is down to no crowds? Maybe, I don't know. It's difficult, it's difficult to say. Like, it's, I mean, it def- definitely the crowds have an effect on, on, on your home teams, for sure. Like You see teams, when, when they're playing at home, they've got a brilliant home record. And now, like, since there have been no crowds, it doesn't really make a difference. It's just who turns up on the day and who's better on the day. Um, so maybe it, did, it hasn't it has an effect, yeah. But obviously, like the the, the Villa Liverpool scoreline was just a, a mental one. I don't think anyone would have <laughs> seen that coming. I saw it very rich about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, you, you've touched on we've touched on Bowie a couple of times now, but he he feels to me like a manager that is very much not not many top players go on to be top managers, but but Lee seems to be making that transition really well. And he almost seems to be a similar manager in terms of style as he was as a player, real sort of combative, sort of wears his heart on his sleeve a lot of the time. And I see him getting involved in training quite a bit. What's he like on a training pitch? Does he get involved and get stuck in with the lads? Uh, he, he, he more comes in as a floater. Like, okay. so he'll, he doesn't really get stuck in like tackling. He'll just right. he'll just be at the side and just start trying to make things happen. Obviously, you can still see he's got he's got quality. Um, but normally as a floater you can't normally score so he's normally trying to set things up and nice. telling people where he wants them and stuff but no he's, he's you're right like he's he does like, where, like, like he, he played I watched him as, as as a player and yeah if he he's no nonsense if you know what I mean like the way he speaks to people very old like old school and like you've got to be able to deal with that and people I think a lot of the young lads coming into the dressing room um, it's been interesting and different probably style to what, what they've been used to but it certainly makes you grow up quickly, um, and you have to you have to deal with that uh, and move forward. Like, like fortunately for me, I've I've been in an era where that was sort of the norm when I was younger, so I'm sort of used to it with with Bo. And but now he has he has been good. He's been good with the lads, and and obviously he's getting he's getting results and, and performances. So it's a good thing. Absolutely. Doing well. And we had Johnny Jackson on uh, the podcast last series and we were talking to him about the transition from player to coach. How's that been from your perspective? Was it strange having him being one of the boys and then telling you what to do in training? Were you the one that kicked him out of the WhatsApp group as well? He told us about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't me to be there. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's always a weird transition, I think. And obviously, I'm, I'm getting older now and I'm starting to think about coaching and stuff. So I know that's that's coming. But no, I think you have to... You're part of the lads one minute, and and he was like he was, he was close with the lads. He is one of the lads. He he, he liked having a laugh, um, but then obviously yeah, he had to sort of step aside and and be a bit more, maybe a bit more professional. Well, he was professional, but like if you know what I mean, you take you're on the other side and you have to step away a little bit. And but he's he's taken to it really well, and and he he's a very good coach in his own right, um, and he, and he works well with both. So. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pleased how, how, how well he's doing as well. He's, he's a good lad. Um, good friend. Has he brought his guitar down to the training ground? Did he what, sorry? Has he brought his guitar down to the training ground? All them oh, songs? Yes. No, he hasn't, to be fair, but I'll give him his due. He has got a decent voice, to be fair, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a bit David Brentner if he pulled out the guitar at the, the training yeah. ground. <laughs> 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 oh, that would be bad. Um, yeah, so that's... That's that's odd for for Johnny and you the transition. But we mentioned earlier you being a leader on the pitch and you're quite vocal. Uh, 
how does the role of captain play out off the pitch and how's that changed? Because you've been captain of pretty much every team you've played for in your professional yeah. career. How's the role of the captain changed over the years? And, and then also touch on the, your role off the pitch as well as on it. For me, it hasn't, hasn't really changed, to be honest. I've, I've always been, since I was young, I mean, Eddie, Eddie Howe, I think, gave me my first opportunity as captain. And I've never really changed. I've always been someone that's I've just I've been the same sort of person. I always try and get on with everyone, help people. And obviously, if people need to be told, then they get told, like, get a rollicking or whatever. But I've always, I always wear my heart on my sleeve and give give my all and, and then try and lead by example. And that's that's what I've always been like as a as a player and, and as a captain um, in terms of my role off the pitch I just try and make sure everyone's all right and I think probably in recent years probably more and as, as I've got older I sort of tend to realise with the mental health side how making sure like people are all right if you know what I mean like because obviously there's different personalities in in every team and not everyone's the same so it's just and not everyone all gets on do you know what I mean like so it's just making sure everyone's everyone's all right um, off the pitch, and then if they're if they're not, then finding out if they need any help or any advice. And 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 that has been the case in recent years. To be honest, I've spoke to a lot of people off the pitch after games when the manager spoke to them about something negative, positive, whatever it whatever it may be, and just making sure they're okay. And I think for me, whether I'd be captain or not, but I feel that that's that's a role that I I, I enjoy doing because it gets a reaction from, from the players and making sure I know they're all right. Um, and yeah, just making sure the team's together, really. I assume that role's been even more vital throughout lockdown because, you know, young players who maybe live by themselves, haven't got their family close by and going home after training and, and not being able to get out and about must be tough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Well, I say lucky, and I my hands full with, with three kids and misses. No, but it's, it's like I'm lucky in that sense. I think like being able to, especially in lockdown, to be able to spend time with your family has been been great. But yeah, on the other hand, there's there's other players that mentally it must be tough. Like they're not being able to see their families. They're in a flat on their own, probably just playing FIFA or Call of Duty, or whatever they play. And yeah, it's it's difficult. So yeah, it's just making sure that they're they're okay and they're they're, they're dealing with it all right. We we. Luckily, we like they give us plans. Like pl- the the fitness coach will give us plans that we work through and fit to do fitness runs and weights and stuff like that. So keep us keep us going. But yeah, it can can be difficult. Alone, like I said, a lonely place sometimes. Definitely. And what's your what's your finding system? Have you got a crazy finding system to make sure that the Christmas party that isn't going to happen this year is going yeah. off well? No, we had. Um, I remember. I remember when uh, I think it was a couple of years ago when Bo first took over and we were like. We had a finding system. It was must have been like ten pounds for like leaving your, your pants out or leaving a tea. And and Bo, we showed Bo, and he, he went ten pound. That's nothing. That's not going to affect anyone. And made us like like I don't know. We put it, put it to about hundred pound, and we were like, hold on, we're not hold on a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, can't, can't do that. yeah, I was going to say have no, we have no money left. So no, <laughs> we, I think we come to a compromise and. He, he, he takes, a, well, Bo and the staff take a few fines for like if, if lads are late for um, team meetings and stuff to do with the team, a team bus and things like that. And then all the little little bits around the training ground, um, the lads the lads sort of take and like you said, try and create a pot for the Christmas do really. So do you have to collect that? Is that your yeah. role? Is that yeah. hassle? To be fair, like I've, I haven't, in, in the past, this is, I haven't been doing it. Normally it was, I, I, I'll give it to a couple of the other lads. Delegated, like, good yeah, leader. Delegate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we do, um, I don't know if you've heard about it, like we do a thing called, um, you can go to Kangaroo Court. I don't know if you've heard about it. Basically, yeah. if, you, if you give a fight, if, if, if someone gets fined um, and they don't agree with it, they can go to a thing called Kangaroo Court. So we'll get like all the all the lads in the changing room. Brilliant. And then they can debate the, the fine. So we'll have like, our, our, it'll be like me, We've been in Chris Solly, Jake Forsakasti, and a couple of the others, like as, as the as the people basically decide. And if they if if we decide they're right, then they they get it off. If if they if they're wrong, they they it gets doubled. So it's up <laughs> to them it. And then norm, normally when they go to kangaroo court, the lads are buzzing, like because we get get them in the changing room and they're Ooh, <laughs> plead their case. I yeah. love that. That's no, good. It's, it's nice when it's it's good banter when uh when it goes to kangaroo court. 
Who was the biggest joker in the dressing room these days in, in, in the Charlton dressing room? Uh, don't know. I'll say I'm up there, to be fair, but uh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Williams. Yeah. We, well, well, when when um, when Mad- Marcus Madison come in, um, obviously you see, he's a different type of character. Like yeah. I got, I got told, and I, I never judge. I never sort of try to judge people until I meet them face to face. But he um, on his on his Instagram, he had like a picture up, and uh, and it, of, of him like in his hotel room, and he dressed up, and then he put the camera on himself, turned it round, and like done a little smile at it. So like to bed it to bed him in. We've got like TVs around the training ground, so like it basically tells you what we're doing for the day, like the schedule. And um, and I asked, I asked the people that do it. I said, can you put this Instagram post up so if, <laughs> whenever someone comes in, when everyone comes in, they literally see that. And he went, who, who done that? Who done that? I said, that's unbelievable, man. <laughs> and then no, I told him it was me. I just said it was a bit of friendly banner, and he's he's been cool, and he's he's been he's been fine ever since. Like just to try and bed him in, it's it's always hard when you join a new club, like to. And little things like that for me, like just help bed him in and and uh, make him feel welcome. I know it's a bit of, it's only friendly banter. It's not nothing, nothing bad. But yeah, that's quite funny. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. Have you done his initiation song yet? Uh, yeah, I think he has, but because I've been injured, I, I missed, I missed all of them. There's, about, there's been about twelve or thirteen. I missed them all. <laughs> oh no! What was yours when you've moved clubs a few times? What's, what's your What's your go to? Um. Is, oh. Um, uh, hey Ma, Hey Ma, Cameron, Hey Ma. Oh wow! I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we had to get Jacko to sing on the pod as well, and he wasn't having any of it either. Nah, would well, I tell you? Um, Adam Matthews, unbelievable voice. Yeah, unbelievable voice. Yeah, like he sings uh, Chris Brown. He's wow, a ch- he's, a, he's a joke. Seriously, you need to get him on the podcast. Get him to sing. <laughs> he's probably you have, to get, you have to line him up for us. Yeah, he's he's unbelievable. Brilliant. Um, you mentioned there, uh, Jack, you touched on you've had a few moves and, and one of your clubs was, well, a couple of times you're at Portsmouth, um, but just want to touch on the time you're at Portsmouth when, you know, they're in financial difficulties. There was talk about them going under and how that impacted you, you as a player, how, and how it impacted the whole squad and, and how you focused on the, the job in hand. Yeah, the time, I've, I mean, I've been in administration three times in my career, um, but but fortunately for me, I didn't really, I was a young lad, so I was sort of living at home and didn't really have any outgoings and, pr- and real pressures, really. So it didn't really affect me in a, st- in a sense, if you know what I mean. Obviously, it affects you because you're not getting paid fully. But um, so for me, like when it, when it, when I was back at Portsmouth, it was, yeah, it was it was difficult time for the squad because you had a lot of senior players on a lot of money there at the time. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and a couple of them didn't want to take any cuts and, and or, or at the time, yeah, we took cuts, even like me and I remember Joel Ward, um, who's at Palace now, and we, we as young lads, they were so like they wanted us to take a cut, and we were on nowhere near, like well, nothing, nothing compared to any of the lads, and we were like, yeah, that's fine if it helps keep the club afloat. Um, and a few of the other senior ones would like wouldn't take a cut on what they were on, and it was like yeah. it was a difficult time, I think. Um, and then yeah, just. Because of that, the, the club nearly nearly went out. Well, well, nearly nearly lost the club. But we they they said to they basically called me and um, Joel Ward into the into the office and said, look, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sell you because at the time we we were the assets um, and we were like that's that's fine. Like we want I wanted to stay. I just bought a house in the area and and, and wanted to settle there and loved I loved the club there. Um, but we had to yeah we had to be sold for for financial reasons and and, and move on. But it's it's a difficult time you know and it's more for me like seeing it three times it's just really difficult for the staff because the players are actually covered like we have to take wage deferrals um, and I lost a little bit if they are they asked me to take a cut and I did take a cut but you you eventually get the money back but the staff yeah. they have to take cuts and and it's a really difficult time for them because a lot of the staff are, are, the, are the clubs and and they love the club. Um, and they not might not be on a lot of money, and they're having to take cuts. It's really difficult times. So it's not nice to see. Is it is it almost impossible when it gets to that, that bad to concentrate purely on football? You, you can't just switch off from that. It's, it's it's I mean once once you get on the pitch, like everything goes out of your head, and you just focus on the job in hand. So once you're on the pitch, but I think obviously the, the manager, whenever the managers I've been with managers, they've always tried to get us to focus literally just on the football, but. Ultimately, you, you do think about your sort of livelihood and, and what's going to happen with your career, and are you going to get paid? And you just naturally think about that. And I think everyone does do that. Um, so you, you, I'd be lying if I said I didn't 
think about it, no. and it don't, it don't, and it can affect you. Yeah, I mean, obviously there was a chance we were going to go into admin really at Charlton, and and, yeah. and yeah. That my situation from now, uh, back, what I was like back then, um, is totally different. I've got so many, so many more things like in my life that I need to provide for, and a mortgage and stuff like that. So yes, yeah, it's, it's totally different. And you, yeah, Cal just touched on the, the teams you've played for. You've played for some sort of iconic clubs in English football, really. Your, your Portsmouth, your, your, your Leeds, and, and, and they're, they're renowned for having amazing atmospheres. What's, what's, the, what's the best atmosphere you, you've, you've played in front of? You, you don't have to include the valley in this, as, as I've said. No, I mean, really no I, 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 to be fair, like, well, the, I would say like Charlton, the, the, the semi final game. Um, was, was like the valley was unbelievable. That was ridiculous. Like the, the fans were brilliant. Um, so yeah, that that that, that one that night would, would have been great. I mean, I remember so one of the games at Leeds. Um, we played Everton in the in the cup, beat them two 0 and the and the atmosphere that that night was incredible. Like something you sort of dream of as, as a lad. And and for me, the Portsmouth fans were were brilliant. Like we, I remember one game. I think we were losing to Peterborough. In the championship, three 0 at half time, and they were they were singing, singing as we went off. Like it was like we were like losing three 0 Yeah, hold on. <laughs> like, and but they were singing us, and then I think it, it, it finished up three 0 in the game. Um, it was incredible, like the, the the fans there. So like I've been I've been very lucky um, to play at some some really good clubs, and I've, I've yeah really enjoyed it. And there's been some top top fans. Yeah. I just want to clear something up, Jason, because you you mentioned you played some for some top clubs. And there's a rumor that you turned down signing for Ipswich. Is this true? There was a, there was a, there was an opportunity, yeah, with, within that. Um, I think it was when I was going to go back to Portsmouth that I could have gone to Ipswich. There was talks, yeah, but I didn't really get too far to be honest. Because basically, when I left um, Portsmouth, Portsmouth for the first time, when Harry Redknapp, basically Harry Redknapp, sat me down and just said I was a young lad. There was so many, there was Sol Campbell and people like that at the club and. There was no chance I was going to get a look in, um, and he just said, "Look, for you, the, the best thing for your career is to go out on loan um, and learn your trade." And 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 in the end, I went to Bournemouth permanently, and basically as part of that deal, um, they had a fifty percent sell on. So when bought when Portsmouth wanted me back, they had a fifty percent sell on. And, and to be fair, like I'm, I'm from down, I was from down that way, and it just made sense for me to go back there. So I didn't really look at Ipswich, to be honest. It wasn't even on the table by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you off. Yeah. What was it like just being in and around Harry Redknapp's Portsmouth team? He, he built a team of superstars, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was surreal for me, really, to be honest. Like coming through, I remember I was I was I was quite nervous, to be honest, when I used to go and train with the first team um, with all these stars around. And back then, it was it was difficult. Like the way the way I am with the youngsters now. I really want to, I'd really try and build them up and make them feel welcome. And, and I just feel like being like that will bring the best out in them and make them feel at ease and comfortable with us. Back then when I was training with, with the first, with the first team there, I was, I was nervous. I was nervous, but then they didn't make me feel too welcome. There was a couple that did, but like, it wasn't like it, like I am with the lads here. So it was, and I always remember that now. So that's why I'm, you learn from stuff like that. And probably because I felt like they made me feel like that. And then I was nervous. I probably didn't give the best account of myself um, yeah. when I was with him. So yeah, I just I always remember remember that. Must have been great though, playing alongside the Soul Campbells, the Carnews, and just in training, just, just incredible. Ups your game massively. Oh, it was incredible. Like I remember Carnu was like didn't really move much, but you just couldn't get the ball off him. And I remember Nico Nico Cranchar was one of the best I've ever seen in in training. Like literally, no one could tackle him. He got Sol Campbell, the way he talked, and he did help me a little bit, to be honest. Like when I was there, he was one that was really considering where he'd been and where what level he played at. He he, he did try and help me. Uh, Linvoy Primus, there was some massive people. Even Tony Adams coming as a coach, done a lot of work with, with Tony Adams. And yeah, some some great characters there and, and good professionals. And yeah, I learned a lot from them, um, whether that was negative or positive, to be honest. Right. Sounds like you've you've drawn a lot in your career, and and you are the player you are now, the captain you are now, from from good and positive experiences that you've had throughout your career, which which sounds amazing. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to a few of those high performance podcasts at the moment, and mm. they always mention about the mistakes, and uh, uh, it's massive in, in in learning for anyone. And 
for me, yeah, like mistakes and and negative behaviors, and you just learn from that and, and learn what you what you what you will take what you, what you want really from the situation. So a lot a lot of things that have been negative um, that have happened in my career or mistakes you've made, you you learn from, and, and that's what I'd say like to any young player or anyone coming through, like just just it's good to make mistakes. It's good to learn from, from negative behaviors and take it all on board and just try and learn from it. And how so, much do you, you're clearly a top player, otherwise you wouldn't have played at a level you've played at without some natural ability and all the hard work you've put into your, the football side of your game. But how much do you put down to your, your sort of, essentially how you are as a human being and your character and your mentality? How much, how much emphasis do you put on that that you think you've, that's made you be the captain you are and also for you to, be, to stay at the very top, essentially? Probably, I've no, I haven't been, I haven't played at the top, but, but I think you know, top top level football, still top level. Yeah, football. I think my mentality and, and my professionalism for me has got me a long way. Like I'd, I'd probably say I am probably one of the best professionals. Like I'm just, from my own point of view, yeah. that's that's what I'd, I try and work on, like to be to be the best I can. And then uh, ability wise, yeah, obviously. I'd, I would add some some ability to being a defender, but I would say more like my professionalism, my mentality um, has got me to where I am today. If, if I'm honest, I, I do believe that. Excellent. And, and earlier on, you touched on you're thinking about coaching and stuff. I, I'm not writing off the next few years of your career, but is that the plan to go into coaching? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I really enjoy. Like I've, I've I've done quite a bit of coaching at Charlton now with the sort of under 15s and 16s and I've done a little bit with the under 18s um, and I, I really enjoy it like I, I, I really feel like I've got something to give back um, to the young ones coming through um, and I enjoy trying to help them and, and, and make them better players so I'm just I'm currently just finishing obviously it's been slowed down the process just because of COVID but I'm, I'm hoping to finish my licence this year um, and then and then yeah just obviously I've started my own academy um, which has been a, a, a good start, um, but something I want to keep on improving. And yeah, this yeah, that's that's definitely something I want to do. But ultimately, I want to finish finish my career on a high and still feel I've got a few years left in me yet. Decent. And I was reading up on your academy earlier. It sounds like it's very much how you've spoken through throughout this podcast that speaking about the mental side of sport, not just turning up and playing football on a Monday night or whatever night they train, and just really thinking about their careers as well. Yeah, no, so it's been a major thing to be honest, and I've tried to explain that to, to a lot of the parents I've spoken to. Like, I don't. There's there's been some academies out there that their main focus is to to get them into clubs, or they'll tell them they'll get them into football clubs. And for me, it's not about that. Like my my experience, what I've told them is when I was younger, I, I come into I went into an academy, and I really didn't enjoy it. Um, and 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 then ultimately, I didn't I didn't get taken on um, I went out and play, played for my local team and then I loved it and, and was playing with confidence and then a year later that that academy same academy brought me back and then I went through the ranks and and the rest is history so, as such but for me setting up my academy I've said to the parents like, I don't want it to be about you coming to my academy and then they're going to get straight into a club because I don't want it to be like that I want them to just enjoy it have a fat real family feel um, be professional but within the enjoyment side, that we got good coaches there, professional coaches that are going to improve them on the way. And if they're good enough, um, and, and I think they're good enough, then when they get old enough, then then I'll, I'll, I'll will put them into the links I've got at different clubs. Sounds brilliant. And we'll put the we'll put the link to your website in our description of the, of the pod. So if anyone's listening, oh no, thank you. Check that out. Absolutely, give that a push. So, Jason, really appreciate your time. I'm going to just finish on the question about our business, FCE. So we're an events company, and what we do slightly differently is when we take our clients to a sporting event, we make sure their whole end-to-end experience is first class. So if we could take you to any sporting event in the world and give you the FCE experience, what would be your dream event? Oh, no good. budgets. Don't worry about budgets. Jacko went for Cheltenham, Cheltenham Gold Cup Day, which is probably the only one we've ever had in the UK. So you can go for absolutely anything in the world. Anything in the world? I'll, I'll say the yeah. World Cup final then. There you go. Decent. England. Yeah. We'll make sure England are in it as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fast. I'd say I appreciate that. Top man. <laughs> good luck for yeah. the Really appreciate that. Good luck with uh, the comeback and uh, just make sure you don't beat Ipswich in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's good, Jack. Carl, appreciate that. Thanks, Thanks man. Cheers. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.
we've just had the Charlton FC captain on. How was that for you? Yeah, it's great, mate. Like he's um, obviously Charlton are doing well at the moment. We've just started the started the new season. We had a big overturn of players, and and sort of Pierce has been the one that's been there kind of throughout. Really, as as, as a Charlton fan, we've been through some rough times, and and um, Pierce and Bowyer and Jackson, and they, they've all they've all been there throughout it, and they've they're stuck with the club. And and I think Charlton fans will respect that because he seems like a really loyal character. And just having that conversation with him there was just brilliant insight into how he kind of runs the dressing room as captain at Charlton how he's kind of developed that captain's mentality. And he's the more, the, the, I think the mindset of him being a professional footballer is really, really interesting. And, and he, I think he, he admits it himself. He hasn't probably got the most ability out of anyone in the dressing room, but what he has got is a very, very strong mindset and some incredible professionalism. And he touched on learning from the likes of Sol Campbell and both good and bad, right? Uh, and I just think it's a re really interesting conversation as to someone that has played a very, very good level of football, but has just learned a lot the whole, uh, all the way along. And he now wants to give back as well. Yeah, because those lessons he's learned throughout his career, he's now bringing into his academy. So hopefully the future kids of our generation will, will benefit from that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I love that when you get we get sportsmen on this pod and they, they talk about their career, but they they don't just, when they get to the end, just, just call it a day with their sport. They all seem to be so invested in their sport and, and that's brilliant. They're the types of people we like talking to. Definitely. I, I really enjoyed the bit where he spoke about being at Portsmouth and he didn't get that arm round him from the senior players when he was yeah. a youngster. I think that's really, really enlightening about how things have changed in a football dressing room over the years. Absolutely. I think if you'd have asked, if we had someone on this pod 10 years ago, well, there probably wasn't podcasts around then, but if, if hypothetically there was, I don't think you'd have had a football captain talking about the mental health side of the game. And, and we've got, he, he touched on a, a player called Ian Marston that's coming from Chelsea this year, 18 year old. And we played, Charlton played the other night and he got kicked up in the air because he was probably the best player on the pitch by a million miles. But I, I can imagine he gets back in that change room and Pearcey puts an arm around him and makes sure he's all right. And, and then, and that's something that probably just wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. Yeah, so much to be learned from it. That was great fun. It was, mate. Roll on next week. Can't wait.